Welcome back to Movie Talks. I'm Daniel, along with Ernest. Hello. And uh, today we got uh, Fernando doing the uh, producing on the on the table. Hello. And uh, we have a lot to talk about. We are discussing about Chappie, the, a movie, uh, Ernest, you really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. One of your favorites, you would say. One, uh, from my favorite director, Neil Blomkamp, yeah. You, which has done a lot. I would say has a pretty good, decent career. He has made a... You know, Elysium and uh, uh, District 9, mm-hmm. which is one of the great ones. And he's now, I guess he's done doing Gran Turismo, which I didn't even know was coming out. Yeah, he has. I'd say he has a cult following. You know. Really? And a very interesting style. Mm-hmm, uh, sure. But before we start going into that, today's question of the day. What is your biggest pet peeve when going to a movie theater? Uh, well, you know, I'd mentioned before that people talking is just one of them. Uh, I've had one experience where people were kind of uh, hounding my wife and I. Oh my god! Will. I don't even know what happened there. I'll mention it right now, though. I don't know if they knew her or what, but it was a bunch of like I don't know if they're kids. It's dark, you know. Yeah. But uh, there's like five or six of them behind us, and they kept saying her name, Sarah, and laughing. Ah. And like at a certain point, you know, we're like, I ask her, like, turn around real quick. Do you know these people at yeah. all? She turns around, doesn't know him. And I'm like, huh. And they keep saying it. So I'm like wondering, what the hell is going on here? And they're laughing about it. So I, eventually I just said, hey, man, you guys know these? Do you know this woman or whatever? Yeah. And then they got all scared and just felt like, man, these are kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they were like, I, I was like, I wasn't going to be there. Teenagers? Uh, they probably were like 17, 16, 18. Yeah. Oh, my God. It made me feel bad. Though. I'm like, I'm not trying to beat these kids' asses or anything, you know? But yeah. It's a weird situation. Was it even a movie you were highly like, invested in or? Uh, what was it? I want to say it was Infinity War. This actually happened. Oh, that's so, yes. fucked up. Well, okay. not before it started. Yeah. Oh, but still, yet. Yeah. I mean, when you go into a movie like in a big event like that, right, right, where you're kind of waiting for it, and then you have like disruption like that over stupid kids. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, for me, yeah, it's I did. I went to see Creed last night, and yeah, throughout the whole pot time, there's these kids in the back, and you can hear them so fucking loud, and I'm just. For me, I can ignore them because it's not it's Creed. It's not, you know, something I'm really highly invested with. Mm-hmm. But that's one of my biggest annoyance. My biggest one, though, because I'm, well, obviously because I'm kind of short, too. I hate when people walking right in front of the movie theater, you know, right in front of me, trying to go to the bathroom at an important time. Like, I don't understand. If there's a, a big action scene, why do you need to pee? Just hold that shit in. <laughs> You well, know, you know, it's not healthy for you, first of all. Yeah, but come on, like, don't. And I hate the whole. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like, dude, get the, just go the fuck out of here. What, what theaters do you usually choose? Because I, I won't. Even, I'm bougie like that. I won't go to a theater that doesn't have recliner seats. Oh, speaking of that, well, last night I went to Sam's Town, and where's that? Uh, on Boulder and Flamingo. It's inside of a casino. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, mm-hmm. and oh my god. I'm so used to going to Galaxy. I'm like reclining it all back on a leather chair. And this one, I'm just straight forward. I'm like, okay, this is very uncomfortable. Right, right. Yeah, once you go to those recliners, you, there's no way you can go back. No, not really. Place, yeah. I mean, even if, uh, I remember in another theater, you can lean back a little bit. But, God, I mean, I felt so claustrophobic. And there's no, there's no table now to put all your popcorn and shit on that. Like, now I'm feeling kind of bougie. You're but so spoiled. I, you know, as a yeah. kid, man, I had wooden seats in the theater. You know, just that little one cup holder. Oh, God. And and now, yeah, I just can't go back. You, Dude, I remember going back in Hawaii, and it was this really ghetto-ass theater. They had folding chairs. Folding? like Folding metal folding chair, chair? chairs. And it was a really, really old one. I mean, I, f- I forgot what movie we watched. It must be like Blank Check or something. Like, really that bad. I was like eight years old. But, yeah, we have come a long way into what comfort is, you, you know, in theaters. Where you can, yeah. Uh, Fernando, do you have any uh, movies or pet peeves? Oh, yeah. Uh, ooh. Uh, I think we talked about this before, but I just hate stepping on popcorn. Oh, yeah. Mm. Because right. when you walk, I feel like, you know, especially, it, <laughs> it's especially a weird on the crunch. floor. If, especially on the floor, you just feel like, I don't know, like weird crunch, like you said, but also you get stuck to the floor. Like, oh, that stickiness feeling. Mm. The <laughs> stickiness. Like, I hate that. Yeah. Wow. Is that popcorn though? The stickiness? I don't know. It could be other things that you know. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I, I feel like it stops me from gliding into the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little like little slip kit. <laughs> okay, well, good. Uh, let's now let's go into the meat of the uh, program. Uh so we talked about Chappie. Mm-hmm. Uh so explain what the movie's about for uh, people who have never seen it. 
<clears throat> I'm not sure if I'll be able to give what it's about from his, pers- you know, Neil Blomkamp's perspective, but from what I got from it is, um, you know, kind of like you mentioned earlier, it's what it is to be human. You know, I mean, he, you've seen the film, obviously. Yes. Um, so he's born and raised into uh, poverty, not poverty, um, criminalization, just all the all the negative, you know, just many like many of us who well, are the uh, character Chappie. Chappie, yes, which right. is like an automatic. It's a police robot that got rebooted into with a uh, human conscious, right? AI right? program, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, okay, so what happens from there? Uh, well, I mean, he was stolen from uh, he was stolen by the creator, or stolen from the creator by these criminals who are trying to you know weaponize him and use use him to profit from make make them money uh help them rob banks and what have you mm-hmm. um and in all that yeah he's helping them because you know he's he's a, a newly born ai he doesn't know any better he has the mind of a child but um at the same time he has a better or an idea of right from wrong based off what his creator had told him about you know that side of life uh, in the end somewhere he uh, kind of picks up on what how he's being manipulated and I don't know. It's there's a lot to dig into with this movie. But there's a lot, and we'll go into spoilers in this because there's a I mean, there's a lot to say. Uh, ending at the ending, of course, him and his creator, who was Dave, who is um, his name is Dion, mm. uh, played by Dave Patel. He ends up merging since Dave Patel ends up dying. He ends up merging him with another uh, robot, mm-hmm. and then they kind of like have their own happy world. Right, Choppy uh, dis- uh, discovers how to manipulate consciousness. You know, yeah, to change one to another, another robot, or to extract it from our minds. You know, or our bodies, whatever, well, wherever consciousness is. Well, what made you actually what what made you enjoy this movie? Uh, well, see, I I have always thought about weird stuff like that, like what consciousness actually is because scientifically you know we don't know what it is it's just energy uh so that aspect of the film for him to be able to figure out what it is extract it from our our meat bodies uh and to transfer it elsewhere it's it's like ever it's everlasting you know so i like i really liked that about it made me question a lot about if we can do something like that in the future maybe would that actually would that be possible i don't know i mean I mean, anything is possible, I, I feel like. You know, there's actually conspiracies that talk about that it's already been done by millionaires. Like, for example, um, people that you have never heard about. Uh, billionaires, people who have been in power for a very long time. Like, for example, the Rothschilds, they're actually saying that they have been able to manipulate the the um, how to con- uh, transfer your consciousness to a new body. See, that's creepy. Cause how rich? How rich can you remember that movie Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise? I've never seen that actually. Well, basically at the end, that's basically what he did, right? He he, uh, they froze his mind or something, and then that's the whole movie. It's him living in his consciousness while being preserved for him to like get healed by his scars, whatever. It's a weird, weird fucking movie. Oh, also one more thing. I'm sorry, just to follow up with what I said. There's also I don't know if it's uh, Bill Gates or someone else. But they're already talking about uh, inserting your consciousness into a computer. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the episode of uh, Black Mirror where you have the uh, the consciousness in a computer. But there actually talks about oh. being able to do that already. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, there's a couple of those. Well, That's kind of creepy. What is it, though? I mean, it's not data. It is data. So it's pretty much like an AI where you can uh, where your, consci- your consciousness lives on with your family and whatnot in a computer. That's a... St- uh, see, that's one thing. Okay, I would say the one thing I like about Black Mirror, it asks you questions whether the thing about science, well, of all science fiction is, okay, we have this technology. Is it morally right to do is it, all the possibilities? Should we do do this? You know, I think I think that we should talk about that in a different episode. <laughs> no, yeah, but I mean, I'm serious. But like that's cause, no, cause that's Mi- one thing that they do because Black Mirror in itself is a beast. It is, you yeah. know, like each episode is really just a beast that we can just talk about for hours. That forever. would be, ta- yeah, that would be another thing. But you know, getting aside from the whole consciousness of of humans in this, uh, this is not the first time that this idea has come around. You know, 
They've uh, it was established back in the early 1986 film Short Circuit, which is like a robot gets shocked by lightning, then finds out that hey, am I alive? Like he has conscious feeling, which it was. I watched it again just for reference for this. It's such a stupid movie. It's, <laughs> I mean, for, for me, I love it still because it does have nostalgic things. But yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, but God, the it's so it's so silly. It's one of those silly films where I'm like, okay, yes, only make films, only make two. Thank you. Did uh, you enjoy this first one or this, uh, the second one more? The first one. Mm-hmm. Well, because you know the second one, he goes to New York and then it's like, okay, he gets a mohawk, he gets all iced out. He yeah, gets and then he starts bleeding, he's dying, and he turns <laughs> to gold. And it's like Johnny Five is alive, and it's like, oh my god, like okay, I get it. But of course, it's the main it... actors makes a lot. And in the first one, Steve, Steve Gutenberg and Ali Sheen was in there. Their connections were like, and of course, oh, the general. Like, you know, everyone actually was a good cohesive collector that made it what it is. Right. But, but let's just go back to Chappie. I didn't like the film. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can understand why a lot of people didn't like the film. Well, you know what, who really, really drove me crazy? The Antwerp. Huh? The Antwerp. The, the those two people you know uh, ninja oh, and ninja Yolanda, and they're a, Yolanda they're a South African uh, rap rave group yes I saw their stuff because I was like who are these people they are so silly like that I love is, them I love oh them. my god That's one of the aspects that I love about this film like one of my favorite music music groups uh, paired up with one of my favorite directors and oh just, so you actually this is a band this is a group that you actually enjoy yeah too. it's one of my favorite bands actually yeah. oh, okay well look I don't. He I must understand. Have, it's all right. He I'm must have here. some connections to those guys because oh, yeah, they're, they're both from South Africa. Oh, mm-hmm. see, he has a thing with being has like his settings is always in South Africa. His pe and his people mostly are South Africa. I don't know if um, who's the main character? Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte L- yeah, Kobe? he's also South African. Oh, okay. So he has some Johannesburg. Like, yeah. Oh my God, those okay. two ca- like I hate the ninja character. Was it? They're they're the worst of the worst. As far people. as acting or people? No, like people. Like their characters. Yeah, the characters are just awful. Right, right. Because, okay, they steal the thing, and they end up owing money to the, another dr- uh, higher drug lord. Mm-hmm. And then they're, like, I think it was like 20 million or Something whatever. Like that, it's yeah. like super like, ridiculous high. And the first thing they do is they teach Chappie how to fucking carjack. And I'm like, okay, that's the most silly thing. Like, okay, how am I supposed to invest in a character who's doing, like, wrong stuff? Right, right. Well, I mean, that's one of the more beautiful aspects of this film. It's like I I mentioned earlier, like many of us, you know, we've been programmed at such a young age, whether it be society, uh, our parents, what have you. So same here. But when you're not that, you're the one who wants to break the cycle or needs to break the cycle. That's what Chappie is about, in my opinion. You know, he was again, he was like a naive, uh, a million dollar naive machine that could do whatever he wants in a child and not to mention his speech was bad yeah the speech is a little bad i wish they would have made it much more intelligent like i robot had a much even fucking shorts oh, johnny like five had a it wasn't british well no had I robot? Not, oh yeah not british uh he but had has a, very... a more intelligent like you know an actual real it was, he didn't sound like a baby mm-hmm. and yeah, but you a, gotta keep in mind daniel that he is a baby. They made it out to be that he was a young child. Right, like right. Baby. No, right, which is fine to have it in the beginning. But the whole mummy daddy thing, that kind of like, I'm like, that threw me off a lot because I you figure he will grow. Well, how fast can a kid grow? I don't know. Like, it's a robot. I mean, I mean you know, like, that, that was the thing. There was just his whole, even how he had his tantrum of of finding out that he's, gonna die in five days i think it's five days well i mean he's still a kid but he's he's learning much quicker than a human would you know so right. maybe 20 years down the line he ain't gonna talk like, i mean well not only that but he's from south africa so he has a his for whatever reason he's a robot you know he has a south african accent yep. that's what that is i guess yeah it's just it was one of those where the mixture of you're rooting for a, a villain who which you, you don't he, who does like you know villain stuff and then you have the outrageous character, even like the the mafia, the head mafia guy. Mm. 
all the yeah, all the chappies goes like haywire, and then next thing you know, he's like, "I'm gonna cause a riot." And he burns down the whole fucking jo- Johannesburg. Wait, who does? Oh, uh, the, the the drug lord. Yeah, and right. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like that's how bad that's how bad uh, South Africa becomes because jo- Johannesburg is not. Yeah, it's it's bad over there. Oh, I I can figure, but it can't be. It's not apocalyptic. Well, no, nah, that I mean, he he just took t- took advantage of all those AIs being offline. Is what it was. Right, right. And then what happens? Hugh Jackman goes. You know what? His uh, his machine, that big ass. The thing, moose, yeah. Yeah, the moose. Mm-hmm. Was that was just, like Metal Gear shit, right there. No, that came from like Robot, a uh, Robocop. Uh, Robocop two, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, what? Why is he going after the one Chappie? He could have just killed the whole. I don't know. Well, because he's in competition with Chappie. He wants to destroy his competition, right? I mean. Yeah, but that that's only one of many machines. Well, I mean, this one is the AI, so. All the other ones can be controlled aside from Chappie, right? I and plus he had an independent mind. That's mm-hmm. one thing that was interesting that he was ha- able to ha- not think like the other ones. And it was just, I think if I was to, if I were to come at that as a, that movie on a different angle of just saying, okay, it's a child growing up, but the two mixtures of Ninja and his and Yolanda and everyone else just being such a crappy character. Maybe if yeah, maybe if they didn't have Ninja and actually have someone who was a good actor mm-hmm. who could actually portray it better, maybe then that would kind of you know sway me to and fro. Because at the end of the day, when those two people died, I didn't give a shit. That's right. the thing. Right. Like you want to give a shit for at least the character. Mm-hmm. I root for Hugh Jackman and Dave Patel more. Damn. Yeah. See, I mean, we'll say like I said, I mentioned earlier. I can understand why people wouldn't like it you know and and two uh, ninja's characters and yolandi's characters are definitely two of those aspects i enjoyed it but i understand why you didn't like it. they're not the greatest actors they're musicians you know? yeah and so. again if they were trying to portray a, a type of character it was just not done in a way which i give a shit like that was my that was my biggest thing about this movie is i didn't care about anybody like i was just like i don't care this but movie. not even cheppy not really. I mean, it's 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 hard to it's hard to care about an inanimate inanimate ad- object. You know, like it's not. It's just it's for me. It's it didn't go f- far into deep of who he was because it was a short. It was like five days. And see, I agree with everything that you're saying right now, but I also see another side. I you know I see the main components, which is a newborn being brought into this world of negativity but being different than that negativity and turning it into something life-changing you know, you know yeah discovered. you look at it more in a more philosophical way exactly as, yeah. and, and daniel he tries to see it in a more materialistic way mm-hmm. well yeah but i've seen like i said we've seen stuff i've uh there's a movie called finch with uh tom hanks and i forgot who the other robot plays as but he was born he tom hanks made that machine to take care of his dog because he was going to die in this ap- apocalyptic time. And you can see the robot gradually having to learn how to live without the person and know what life, the meaning of life is. And it was, it was done in a, in a, in a much mature way. And plus Tom Hanks was an actor. All I mean, right. I'm going to throw it back because there's also a very underrated movie made by Steven Spielberg that is called Artificial Intelligence. Mm. That too. Haley Joel Osment. Uh-huh. And that movie brought me to tears with what the AI went through. Th- yeah, it's a depressing film. But see, that was made actually Stanley Kubrick had a lot I, I don't know if he wrote it, but that was his, one of his last movies that he was trying to do and yeah, that that movie is amazing. Um Iron Giant Another one. Iron Giant, yeah. Well, there's definitely ways, better ways to depict what it is to be this type of human AI, you know what I mean? And right. like you said, so I can understand why you wouldn't like a chap. I think maybe because he's my one of my favorite directors, I just, I'm, I go all in for whatever he creates. You know? So he is a very talented director. I just wish he, he hasn't done a lot, has he? Yeah, he, uh, I mean, aside from his three hit films, or I wouldn't say they're hits. They're, they're pretty good. They're hits. blockbusters. Yeah, uh, I think the majority of his work has been short films. Short. Because films. He even has uh, a couple shorts in in Netflix now. Uh, he has a quite a few. Yeah, oh. he has Oat Studios. Yeah, that was the one you told me to watch, wasn't it? Right, right. Yeah, this, that's his uh, production, his own production studio. He has a uh, quite a bit of short films on there, and I don't know what they're called. If they're like ten minutes, those aren't short. 
No, those mm-hmm. are those are short. You consider them short. Okay. What is short, uh, Fernando? Is it like less than an hour long? Yeah, I think it's less than fifteen minutes considered. Yeah, because yeah. don't quote me on it though. Because he has a few up there that are like twenty minutes, maybe you know, you really know, good. And that's the thing I can find that's very interesting about shorts. And I've seen a lot of it. I've seen one about the box. One, uh, I got. I think it's called two thousand twenty three or forty three. And I, we'll talk about that one because that's a really meaningful about about uh, media and stuff like that. But shorts can say a lot in such a little time, which makes it such a sometimes a much better film than having a three hour film about, you know, stuff. You know, that's the beautiful thing about short films, because short films, you actually have to be created to be able to tell a story mm-hmm. <laughs> in such a you know, short period of time. Oh, yeah. You know, it's something that a lot of uh, blockbusters don't do. They just try to tell the story throughout maybe like 10 episodes. But sometimes shorts, you know, five, 10 minutes tells you a lot about a person. And it's like, wow, this is really well done. I mean, even for a short. Like, like say, for example, Lights Out. Do you remember that one? Um, I remember the short of it. Yeah, the short was maybe like a minute long or like two minutes, but it just it was just impressive. Which is last out? Is that the the light, the ghost in the light? Yeah, yeah you can that. only see it when the lights off. Yeah. Oh yes, that was very impressive for like a minute. And mm-hmm. after that, like minute short film, it actually got budget to make a big budget movie, which was actually pretty decent. You know, oh, yeah. it was, yeah. absolutely, it wasn't terrible. Yeah. That that goes to show you that the power of short films. Mm-hmm. That you don't need. 120 pages to write something meaningful same with the you ever see code eight uh no let me explain it while i'm look i look it up real quick so code eight takes place and i don't want to call it a dystopian world it's still modern day world but where like chappie uh ais are patrolling the streets no longer human bodies you know uh and oh no not only that but they're patrolling the streets all over the world with humans who are uh what are they? Meta? They have. Oh, is that the one where they're going after people with metal powers? Mm-hmm. That was a short film. Great short film. The movie, you know, got enough traction to create a full length. Mm-hmm. Wasn't as good as a short film, but. Oh, I remember this. Okay, so a, a quick summary. What I remember is that he worked at a construction yard, mm-hmm. right? And then the police came and says, "Hey, is there meta humans?" And then next, thing you know, he had to run away because he blew up something right he in the short it. in the yeah. short film it's him and his friend trying to get work they get work the guy screws them out of their their pay because they're metahumans um so they retaliate very lightly get the cops called on them the ais the ai shoots one of the the friend yeah and then the other one you know runs away he creates a huge emp blowing out all their stuff within i don't know x amount or mile yeah. radius and that's what the short film is they're going after him See, this, yeah, that's a good. That, that yeah. was a great. That was a great short film. Which they didn't need an explanation. What happened next? Right, and in the movie they changed all that up, which I didn't appreciate. Really? Right. See, that's 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 very disappointing. Just stick to your short films. That's what I thought it was going to be. I'm like, this is a great concept, you know. Yeah, you don't have to add in more, may, or maybe make a little short series. Yeah, even a short series would have been fine. Now, when looking at Neil Blomkamp, he has he's oh wow he. Is he made Gran Turismo, or is he already in post productions? Yeah, there was a movie he had before that called Demonic. Really? It didn't. You know, it's weird. It's like he doesn't. He, he set such a high bar with District Nine that anything after that he made Elysium and uh, Chappie didn't reset. It wasn't received as well as District Nine, so they kind of saw him as falling off the wagon. You know. Well, here's another thing about his movies: he never makes sequels. Like District Nine kind of deserved that. a sequel. A lot of people want that. I am one of the few that do not. Why? Because you it has. To... I think when you make such a great film like that, it's better left alone for yeah, me. Well, what happens to that? Hit the main character because he turns into a bug. Uh, a, alien. Alien. Bug alien. But like, kind of when you want to know, like, what is his life now? Does he die? Does he just become a ghost? Like, or does he come? You He's know, an what? alien. He's living in District Nine. Eating so trash and stuff. Mm-hmm. Eating cat, well, cat food. Cat food, yeah. They're... Oh God! And then in Elysium, I think they were t- they took over Elysium, and then that's. But then again, what's that movie with uh, Chris Evans when he was on the train? That I think that Snowpiercer. W- Snowpiercer, mm-hmm. much better movie. I don't know. I don't... You know, I personally would have thought that. Uh, I personally would have thought that. Um, 
Elysium would have been better with a different actor because that's Matt Damon. I agree. I couldn't really. I mean, although I like that movie, I can't really take Matt Damon too serious in roles like that. Well, as a serious? I just didn't see him as this character. I see. I yeah, know. me neither. That's exactly my issue with him because they were supposedly originally supposed to cast Eminem, Marshall Mathers. They were supposed to cast him instead of uh, uh, Matt Damon. I think Matt Damon was like the last choice. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That would have been weird with yeah with, with M because M would be like, "Look at me, I'm a uh, look at me, I'm doing this little just machine. glowing over everything, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he said that they the, Eminem declined because he wanted to have it shot in Detroit, but it was shot in Mexico City, and they they told Neil Bloomkamp is like you shoot in Detroit I'm not doing it and Neil Bloomkamp said okay then don't do it then mm-hmm. and that's why they went with uh, with Matt Damon with Matt Good Damon Matt. Mm-hmm. how do you go from Matt from Eminem to Matt Damon though <laughs> the last resort and that's no but <laughs> as a last resort I mean that's like saying yeah I want to have uh you know Lando Bloom but ah uh, we'll get Tom Hardy instead yeah you yeah. know who uh, you, you know that Star Wars game Unleashed yes see that guy I. I put him. He should have been Matt Damon's character, if you know what he looks Which like. Which one? In uh, Force Unleashed. It's an old. It's an old uh, Xbox game with like basically he becomes like a like a he was Darth Vader's he, apprentice. Yeah, and he turns against Darth Vader. But no, that character, the guy who plays that character, he look he would have looked perfect for. Uh, or even the guy from Mass Effect, he would have looked perfect with Matt Damon's character. You, know, ah, you, you also see. know who would have been better hmm. if they just switched characters instead of Matt Damon use the other guy that was helping him the Hispanic guy I forget his name Diego Luna oh right right yeah I think it would have been a better choice than Matt Damon yeah so maybe okay so Neil Blockman just needs a better casting director I think in that film it's it's well I don't know because I that's the only film of his that I didn't where I didn't enjoy Matt Damon as the lead uh, well do you know that he's uh, like I said we're doing Gran, Gran Turismo and the leading dire- uh, star is David Harper from uh, Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. He's playing as a race car driver. Now, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure how that film's going to go. I'm not too big into cars and, and the game Gran Turismo, but I, like as I mentioned, I do like his style. So. How are you? Uh, what about how do you feel about David Harper as a leading actor? I like David Harper as a leading actor. Someone told me I look like him. I'm like, you're like a dark version of him. I guess I don't, I don't, I don't know about. I don't that. see the relevance there. I don't know. I never think of him as a leading man. Who is that? David Harper. He's the he's the uh, the guy from the sheriff from Stranger Things. He's a captain. Oh, I see. From... No, you know what? I can actually see that from you, uh, Ernest. I can actually <laughs> yeah. see it. You know, we just have to shave his head and shave his head and sh- shave his beard. And in summer, I'll look more like him. Oh God, we'll put you in a we'll put you on a police uniform and you will have sheriff to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the kids? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. This movie looks kind of. I mean, I think this should be interesting because Gran Turismo didn't have a story. Right. So is this gonna be like fa- the new Fast and the Furious series? I don't know. First don't one's know gonna be them racing, and the next you know they're jumping off a of fucking, you know, buildings and. Well, using a is. rope to uh, just to, to swing from one mountain to another. That's that. That's what I'm wondering because you know, uh, it's four films that leading up to Gran Turismo. They're all heavily influenced by technology. So with cars, I'm not too sure how technical you can get with these things. You're not going to turn them into transformers or anything. Well, maybe. You know yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. You <laughs> might be able to add some AI into the cars. Yeah, that would be pretty. <laughs> you know, think for themselves. You hear, you hear like Michael Caine's voice. <laughs> yeah. They all Welcome, being... David. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll definitely watch it, though. Like I said, with his movies, it's, I don't know, he has a little. He has very interesting ways of looking at technology and how we, and, and not only that, but just so, so society. Mm-hmm. Like, District 9 was one of those movies where you look at it and you're like, wow, that is basically how we treat people. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was most really, like, outraged. Like, you know, the aliens were actually, if you think of it, were fucking aliens, like how we treat immigrants and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I'm like, oh my God, that's pretty dirty. Yeah, yeah those are the things. themes, especially with the Elysium. Uh, what is it? Like world hunger, world poverty. Yeah, but that's like the rich and the poor people. Yeah, how the right. rich just gets away with everything, even right. death. Um, but Chappie, uh, probably the same with how we are programmed at a young age. A demonic, I, you know, Demonic didn't get a lot of uh, uh, traction because of the 
lack of love people had for his past two films, Elysium and Chappie. Well, you know what they say: you can make a, a bunch of lovely, good films, and you make one bad one, you're forgotten in the in the rubble. And that's unfortunate. I feel like the studios, they just they expect too much, and they don't they don't want to allow independent creation. You know, from no, they do allow it. They just want to make money. Yeah, you got to make money. Right, but do they not also intervene when your story to them is not uh, as appealing as it could be? Not necessarily, because most of the remember most of the corporations and companies, big companies at least, they just want revenue. Yeah, they that's just care why about uh, money. Like for example, Warner Brothers, they're messing up, but the only thing they're looking out for is really just money. You're underlying, and and it sacrifices the movies, yeah. or just for the money. Okay, this is a very that. unpopular opinion. I'm going to say, but Ryan Johnson's Last Jedi, right? It was so bad, even though that Ryan Johnson went through a different way of making a movie. Like he wanted to do the unex- un- expectations of what, what, he, what people, fans wanted, that no one watched it. They lost money. And then they're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. The Last Jedi? Yeah. You're talking about the third Star installment Wars. of. Uh... No, that's the second one. Mm-hmm. So, I didn't keep up with those. Exactly. See, and like uh, mm-hmm. people like die, they were like they're like fuck Ryan Johnson, which I get it. He does. It was so non Star Wars, but the other line is, if you don't make the money, it doesn't matter what your views are and what you're trying to message trying to put into. We don't give a shit. We want we want we want our money. And that's why even Marvel is kind of Marvel and like you said, uh, Fernando said about DC, they're changing everything so they can get that revenue, especially now with C- with. with Fucking Fast X coming up, you know. Mm-hmm. Which oh my god! Hey, we all know that movie's gonna be trash, but will we watch it? Yes. I I, I don't watch those films. I cannot stand those films. I'm, I can't believe people go pay for those films because it's like it's spectacular. You know, it's, it's spect- I mean, if you're looking for a, a, a an action an action yeah. film, all action, those are the films to see. But yeah, to be fair, putting your mic a little bit closer. Yeah, there you go. Right there, you good to go? Yeah. Right. Uh. Yeah, but people still will go for that stuff. Right, right. But as for Neil, like he, those after District Nine, it was just not, not what people wanted. Ooh, if you look at like, look at this, uh, IMDb District Nine seven point nine, Elysium six point six, and Chappie six point eight. Wow, Chappie did better than, <laughs> than yeah, Elysium. I, I watched a lot of reviews on Chappie, and they were all negative. I haven't heard one one person really say anything. Positive. Okay, so like I don't feel too bad of hating this movie so much. No, I, I totally understand why people dislike it, but you'd have to see it the way I see it. I guess. Well, again, when you say the the whole thing, which, which now we're going back to just life and what is life in in the robotic form, I it was an interesting way, and it's so Neil Blomkamp. Just here's the thing: he has a distinct CGI style, which. I adore. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's very. Looks if legit. he did Metal Gear Solid, I think that would be a good movie. He was actually supposed to mess with Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, see, excellent. Just don't put it in fucking Johannesburg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I'm sorry. Like, that's my thing. Like, I'm tired of him doing the same thing. But the whole thing about life and stuff of like that, you it can be told better. I think also if you had a second writer, because you know how some people are stuck with their own thoughts. Mm-hmm. Who had a uh, George Lucas, such a he had to, he, the whole Star Wars thing, the prequels. He wrote everything, and a lot of people hated it because it was just all him, and he didn't have different opinions to say. Hey, let's not let's tweak that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what I actually appreciate about him is that as someone who wants to create their own stuff without outside influence and stick to that, I'm I'm all for that. Yeah, but you still got to make sure it's coherent or not coherent what's what I want to use it has to at least make some kind of sense I think or at least make because sometimes it may make sense to you but not to a wider audience and sometimes you have to just tweak it a little bit just to make sure it's see to me that's I I understand that aspect as well yeah I mean I'm not saying a lot of it Mm -hmm. You see, not everyone can be as philosophical as you, Ernest. <laughs> it's just how I think. I don't know how else to think. No, and and you know what? I appreciate that. I mean, you do have a distinct, and you kind of get it. And some people will get it. That's why there probably is a cult classic. Mm-hmm, a cult um, following. Cult right, following right. with this. Yeah, he so, for sure has that, especially with his uh, production studio. And I mean, look at another don't. movie that people didn't. I mean, Ex Machina. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, another movie, and it. Oh my god! I okay. Not gonna lie again. Hated that film when I first watched it. 
second, third time watching it, I said, oh, I fucking get it. Why did you, you know? the first time? Because, uh, one, um, Oscar, he died. And I was like, fuck that guy. How the hell, how the hell did he die? Because I hate, I hate that, that other character that he had in there. Mm-hmm. And then the robot ends up winning. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? I'm so used to having a structure in which, you know, we always find a way for the, the hero to come out the winning. But in that movie, there really wasn't any. Right? Because in... Uh, he's actually kind of a villain if you think about right, it. Right, right. He was actually a villain, a villain. But when I first watched it, I was just, okay, what the fuck's going on here? Mm-hmm. And you, I have, you know, I wasn't highly, highly invested because like, I didn't understand this movie. But again, second time, I'm like, okay, I get it. And then third time, I'm like, oh, my God, this is a fucking amazing. It is. It is. It is amazing. That's his best, in my opinion. Um, you know, he has, what is it? Like here, did we just talk about Annihilation? Oh, a- Alex Garland. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else movies he did? He did quite. No, yeah, that is fa- my favorite one. Yeah, you know, I enjoy his sci-fi as they get deep into AI oh. the minds of AI like that. No, that's not my favorite one. Twenty Eight Days Later is my favorite one. He made Twenty Eight Days Later. Yeah, he didn't do. Right. Well, he was right. Oh, I'm sorry, he wrote it. Mm-hmm. Twenty Eight Days Later was uh Danny Danny uh Boyled, which was one of my f- it's one of my favorite fucking zombie movies ever done. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he didn't do that much, but yeah, that and Annihilation and then Men. Yeah, there's all kinds of AI movies we can you know they they do them in different. Uh, what would you say? They make the premise about him differently. How they bring him up, what AI actually is. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they, in a way they're just trying to make the audience understand what AI is or how it can be made because I don't know there's there's a lot of controversy about you know people being scared about AI and Me. you know I guess they're trying to humanize it as well. Well, don't don't let Skynet rule the world. No, Shit. I'm on board with the the fear of it. Yeah, I'm not with it. I've seen I, already what they have uh, AI creating on the internet. Oh yeah, it's well, just um, it kind of scary. What was that chat G- GPT and Oh dude, that is so helpful. It does. <laughs> it's kind of a cheat. I just but. watched this one where it was like a face uh ever morphing face, but it was a lot of demonic weird looking faces and I felt like I was putting put into a trance. I couldn't even look at it. It just I don't know if you've seen those videos. No. Where they're like just a... constantly morphing into all kinds of different things. Huh. I'll send you one later. Wow. But they're definitely freaky. I couldn't. I was watching it at night in my bed, it dark, all dark, and I'm like, I can't even look at this in the face. <laughs> yeah, freaky. even uh, put it on your tw- on your Instagram, and so people can watch it too. You know, it's right, right. one that I forgot to mention too with AI is her. Her. Her was uh, with uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. With Joaquin Phoenix, Scarlett Johansson, and that's another one where relationship with with robot with you know AI and robots like. Because we're in a world in which it's, we're, I feel like it's harder for us to grow a connection with people that people will have to now drive artificial. Oh, dude, another one that you forgot is Blade Runner. Oh, my God. See, there's, there's so, so much. many. Yeah, there's so <laughs> Well, Blade Runner is the most famous one of what is life, of what uh, what is life considering. Because even at the end, with the unicorn, we don't, like, I know they have, like, theories of whether or not if, uh, Harrison Ford's character was human or not. A replica, replica. I think. Is he a replica? Does he find See, out? See, here's the thing. End? No one ever knows. Harrison Ford said he is, um, but it's never really said. Like, there's little little skits and everything to give you know real uh, clues on it, but no. Well, in 2049, he, that's what it is, right? 2049. Yeah. He he's, he's living in iso- isolation. Yeah, but you can. I think those AIs can get older. I mean, I guess Arnold did in Terminator. They have that organic flesh, organic <sighs> flesh. Oh my god! And in Blade Runner, you can. They can actually have children now. That's true too. See, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Oh, what also happened in that? Didn't there was an AI who again, uh, Anna Denaria. Anna De Armas. Yeah, she was an AI who had who was had relationship with um. Uh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's character. Oh, so much, so much things to talk about like life and how relationship goes with life, especially now. Like I said, especially nowadays where people are so feel so disconnected with people. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the way to that's the route to go though. What do you mean? Uh, connecting with AI now, you know. No, so I 
I don't think so either. You know, and I personally see it because people are willing to pay for companionship. And if yeah. they can pay for a companionship that can understand them and learn from it, such as AI, people will pay for it and companies will keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we're in trouble. Uh, be future generations are not going to know what, oh. you know. Did you see in Japan, they made actual female sex like bots? With I think AI? they have them here yeah. too, no? Well, no, yeah, they're just dolls, but this mm. is actual. Oh, they talk. move and they talk to you. Yeah, this well, is actual AI. I think. Yeah, hmm. you know, you can always turn them off if they get annoyed. I'm just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but I'm just saying, Japanese, they, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're, they they're all, way out. They all Yeah, they're obedient. All, you know, <laughs> make me a sandwich. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but not going anywhere. <laughs> And it's funny because it's funny that you mentioned Japan because I just watched a, a, a little short or uh, I guess it was like a comedy skit where it says uh, Japanese women are perfect except 20 years into the marriage because they become monsters. And it's funny that you mentioned Japan, you know, that Japan has like the most advanced, uh, I guess, technological AI uh, sex doll uh-huh. for that reason. This is well, their chance. This is their chance for an uprising, for sure. <laughs> They're gonna team up with the AI. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to talk about with uh, Japanese ladies, but they're not. not they're, they're, it all depends on what area, really. Mm. Which in, in all life, I said, because you know how there's. I think it all depends on what kind of man you are. Yeah, too, too, because Japanese guys are creepy too. Yeah. <laughs> they are no anything okay. they say is just sounds epic. No, dude, are you I, saying I, this because you're Chinese? No, I saw this video in which this guy was following this girl in Japan, just like stalking her while she's on her camera, and I'm like, I'm thinking, why are you doing that? Like, what kind of, what has to be in your mind to do think that you you can just do that? There's sadistic but people. But the laws everywhere. in Japan is very different, and it's not to expansion, not to mention the media of, they kind of put it out there that it's okay it's porn okay some of the points yeah no 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 but when you put something out there and people see it and they think oh they can do that in in general mm-hmm. then that can kind of like okay. kind of like normalizes it yeah which is mm-hmm. not not cool like even right, right. with american towels you know they come on you know that's just fucking, that's that's why they're messed up yeah, well, unfortunately, it's all over the place, you know. <laughs> it's not just... You know, being a philosophical man, Ernest, give me your exact thoughts about it. About? Well, you know, just the AI women. Uh, I mean, you're like you said, people are willing to pay for companionship, and if that's what's going to make them happy and you know, fulfilled, then I, I suppose, but at the same time, and I think as humans, we... We're, it's very dis- it's a very distinct line between okay this is just something that i paid for that's going to listen to me as opposed to uh, this this other thing actually cares about what i'm saying human a human right so like i said i don't think it's the right route to go well which was the whole main point of uh, blade runner 2024 in which when he finds out oh this it's a robot or it's not real mm-hmm. that she just she's programmed to love him and not it was actually not real mm-hmm. so when you find that out it's like it's a bummer. It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's funny stuff? because you can just find you can just buy another AI because they didn't care about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they did upgrade. care about you, but they oh, got, that's another. Yeah, you, yeah, you can get an upgrade. It's like, oh, I would like her to do this kind of stuff now. Mm-hmm. You know, wink, wink. Yeah, pay attention to me in this uh, way. <laughs> give me, give me the the software update, please. <laughs> uh, speaking of upgrade, that's another <laughs> under very underrated uh, sci-fi AI film. Have you uh, have you ever heard of it? Upgrade. upgrade. Uh, he puts a chip into his spine to make him to be able to fight. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm simplifying. Nec- right, you're simplifying. Well, yeah, he com- becomes a paraplegic and he doesn't have any use of his limbs. There's a new AI uh, program chip that is available to enter into your neurological. Uh, I don't know the scientific term for it, but your spine basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it helps him do whatever you need to do, your everyday functions and more because it is an AI, but it ends up becoming, you know, greed. Well, greedy. Well, with that, you can also say uh, Alita, where they were having so much, you can have so much Alita? body parts, you don't know, but yeah, Alita Battle mm-hmm. Angel. The manga, yeah. Yeah, well, no, the movie where the people can actually make uh, upgrades to their body. And then now it's like, how much human are you? And, and, here, and here's the thing. Pe- and this is people something that a lot of people don't talk about. But if you think about it, movies have been like a stepping stone for technology. They, mm-hmm. Because even in even Avatar, 
you know, when we talk about transferring of consciousness, Avatar was written in the 90s. Mm. And it was in, in, in the drawer, in, in uh, James Cameron's drawer for like 20 years. So movies have been like a huge stepping stone for artificial intelligence or just technology in general because if you, you see something happening in a movie 20 years ago and then you see it happening now, it's like, oh, we're at that stage now. Mm. Well, in that case, where the fuck is my flying car? <laughs> oh, yeah, my, no, oh, my hoverboard. oh, my hoverboard. Yeah. That's the only thing that hasn't come to light. God damn it. It's no, they actually, the hoverboard exists. And actually now a flying car, now that you mentioned it, um, I follow a lot of drone pages on social media. Yeah, the car drone. Right. They put all these rotors on a car. Yeah. Powerful yeah. enough to lift it up. Not okay. Then how about with my little small pizza that can turn into a big pizza for my microphone? <laughs> That's on its way. That's on its way. I'm just being greedy. I'm just being greedy. There's a lot of things. You know, as long as here, as long in the future we don't go to those goddamn three uh, seashells, I am fine. Three seashells? From Demolition Man. I haven't seen that movie. Oh, my God. Snipes? So I instead of using toilet paper, they use three seashells. And do what with them? I have no idea. They never explain it. Seashells? Seashells. <laughs> Say Let, scrape it out or what? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are going to have to do a movie. You have never seen it? No, I got We're going to have to talk about it. Because Just that, for that alone. And, you know, hopefully Taco Bell won't uh, take over the uh, franchise war. So I'm going to get into Snipes and his tax issues. Oh, God. But you know what? The funny thing about Demolition Man, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll finish with that is that the whole thing of sensitivities in the future of people where they can't handle it, that they use jingles. Instead of using, having music, they had jingles. And that's all you get. Can't handle what? Like violent violent music or, you know, different... Just stress? Stress. In general? Yeah. yeah. So they, everything has to be happy. You can't swear. You have to be, like, you can't touch anybody because it, we'll watch it and we'll go over with it mm-hmm. because how that affects culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we went really kind of sideways on this but you know there's a lot to say about ai and what it what the future holds to it Mm -hmm. so before we go let's do do our normal uh rating of this well what what do you want to start with first well you know let's just do uh what chappy which we uh we talked about more of well we already know i'm gonna give it a 10 all around a a full full 10 10. yeah that movie is just an instant classic yeah it's it Hits me, hits me where in the heart, you know. Okay, so this so is a, a good DVD, you bl- Blu-ray, buy it. I already collection. have it, yeah. Oh my god! It even has the steel book and the digital I'm, download <laughs> <laughs> and the commentary. Yeah, I've <laughs> been meaning they sell it. They sell um, they have a triple um, what is it called? Feature of Neil Blomkamp's in a badass case, a uh, nice little shiny sci-fi case, but of all three of his uh, hit films. Wow! I've been meaning to. Check so this it out. is like okay, wait. So this is a really, really important film for you. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I'll I'll re- I respect that. Um, I'm gonna give it a six. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, six out of ten. It it is um, it's a streaming. It's something where I will not watch. I will say I won't watch again mm-hmm. unless I have to. Oh, I won't watch again. Well, <laughs> if you, I mean, if you're set on that, that's fine. Check out Demonic, his film after Chappie. See how you like that one. No, I love the director. I just again, it's. Look, if it, I swear to God, if it wasn't for Ninja and Johanna and Yo- y- Yolanda mm-hmm. and they're how they exploited Chappie, I will full time. I, P- Dave Patel was excellent there. Mm-hmm. Sigoni Weaver, such a sad, small role. I wish she was more in there. Same with Hugh Jackman. I felt he was underutilized. Yeah. I mean, they had these great, three great actors who really could have drove the film to be a blockbuster and they weren't hardly used. So I don't know what happened. But sticking with Ninja and Yolanda as the main main uh, antagonist, I guess, mm-hmm. is it? Prota- protagonist. Antagonist. Antagonist. I'm like, I don't want to see you. Like, right. show me the stars. <laughs> and see, that's I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I love them, so I want to see them. You know, so there's a whole. See, and that's probably part of it too, because I love exactly. Sigourney and Hugh Jackman are such my and Dave Patel. I, he's such a better actor now mm-hmm. than he was. I mean, he's probably the same person, but his roles has gotten better. Because he didn't have, why do you have to pay, play the typical Indian fucking uh, engineer as always? Maybe it's Just a like, cultural thing. Well, that's what happened in Short oh Circuit. My God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. A lot, you know, along with uh, a lot of, uh, what is it? Ooh. I don't want to say just, I don't want to say it like Asians, but a lot of Asian cultures also teach from a young age, you know, how to prosper and okay. do things for yourself and, yeah. and 
you know, just be all that you can be in the army. So. Well, they are because remember that, yeah, they do have independence at the age of fifteen. When I w- I went to Japan not that long ago, and I seen kids walking around by themselves, and after that, I looked it up, and I guess in Japan at it's the normal. age of what's that? That's yeah, normal. Yeah, at the age of I think it's four or five, yeah. they send them out to go. You know, they have to learn how to get to school themselves, how to feed themselves, how to get home themselves. And I thought that was, I mean, it just makes so much more sense as to why a lot of them are so much more successful. And mature. And mature, yes. Yeah. Not dependent. And I, uh, yeah, admire Well, that. and there's some, though, who goes way off the other end. It's rare, though. I never, I didn't see any, like, really homeless people over there, which was, I thought no, was they, weird. No, they, they don't allow homeless people. <laughs> they don't allow homeless no, people? They, no, I mean, that's yeah, like. You're going to make it and that's it. No, no they just don't. Let them be allowed to be in the... Um, well, it's along with society on the street. Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't let that happen. Uh, Fernando, what do you think? Of, what's your rating for this one? Um, I, I, uh, I just love Neil Blomkamp. So, I mean, he's obviously not going to be as good as District 9 or even Elysium, but I still give it maybe like a 7. 7.5. Seven. Okay, so a little bit more hard. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. But the reason I mentioned uh, Demonic is... To maybe, I, I know you said you still like you're a fan of Neil Blomkamp, but maybe that'll be a little bit of a redemption film for you. Have I seen this movie? I don't know. I have not seen this movie. You know what's crazy about that? So he did those. Then he did Demonic, and now he's going to Gran Turismo. So he got out of Johannesburg. Thank God. Maybe he will make better movies. Well, what I what I read about his the downfall is that the productions companies were getting too involved with the story and wanted to change this, wanted to change that. And he wasn't for that. He wanted to do his own thing, which is why he's probably where he's at right now. Okay. Let me, let's, what do you think about this before we go? Is, is he like the new, is he like almost like a M night Shyamalan? Uh, for sure. And not. Cause I mean, <laughs> in a way that he wants to keep production, but sometimes having all that power is not good for you. Right, right, and some uh, ind- and individual artists, creators, they want to do what they want to do, what the, the story that they want to put out, and I understand that, and I respect that actually. So I'm, he's not definitely, definitely like uh, not like even, a knight. Even Francis Fran Coppola, he he had, um, he is known for Apocalypse, 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 Apocalypse Now, Apocalypse now. Mm-hmm. but that he, after that. They, what they found out is that whenever he had total control of the of a studio or the, whatever story, his all movies are awful. Like there, you don't even know what other movies he did after that. That's the same thing with M Night. He he is also in the same boat. Production companies getting too involved. That's what happened with uh. So no, it's a total opposite. If they're involved, the movie works. If it, they don't be involved, the movie sucks. Hmm. And that's what I'm saying with the same thing of Neil Neil, uh, M Night mm-hmm. is when. Sometimes you need, I'm not saying that to, to ruin your whole vision, but it's like, a, I want to say a curse. I don't know. Well, let me ask you this just real quick. Um, you've seen The Visit? Yes. Okay. So out of The Visit and something like The Village, which one did you enjoy more? <sighs> here's my thing. I like actually like both of them because here's the thing. Village is, it's stupid once you know the, the twist. But the actual suspense till you the reveal mm-hmm. is excellent. My problem with M Night is that he his reveals are stupid. That you don't need to tell like if he ended with just her getting out of the area, that's it. Great movie because you kind of the most the most the mysterious of what the what the demon was or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he always have to do this, like how he did old. I was fine of how if the if everyone died on the beach perfect ending just do, we don't need explanations but he always has to do that now compared to how he did with the visit that reveal was not I did not see that I kind of saw that coming towards the end but again that made sense because you have to know the suspense was what the hell is the grandparents are going to do with the kids mm-hmm. so well the reason I ask which one you enjoyed more because if you had said one over the other one of those films have heavily influenced by production companies the other one individual creation so and i think i think uh that's airbender movie was done after village mm-hmm. yeah okay well <laughs> that's yeah like i said some right people are bad. Hole. yeah well that will be the end of our show uh thank you for joining us make sure you uh comment like and subscribe to all of our uh social media accounts and uh we'll see you next time guys thanks for showing up
Bye bye. Thank you, Ernest, for showing up today. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, for showing up today too. Right, thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for everyone. Thank you. All right, guys. You have a great night. Good night, everyone.